Jesus at the center of it all. You know, that's the truth. Jesus is the center of it all. And we had a great time just worshipping the Lord last night. And it was so wonderful to see whole families being worshipped together. And I was particularly very proud of our young adults sharing the words and their talents with us. As I saw people from the different campuses joining together, it reminded me a lot of when Paul, he had to go through a time where he was locked down. Like this is the first day of our stage four lockdown. He was in prison. And yet even when he was in prison, he wasn't grizzling and grumbling. He was praising God. And you know, in the midst of praising God and honouring God, the Holy Spirit turned up. And I can tell you today, if we'll put God as number one, Jesus number one, then he's going to turn up. And you know, for this month of August, we have got a project called Project Prayer, where we want you to make the most of your one hour of exercise every day during this lockdown, to walk around, pick these cards up, and pray this prayer, the priestly prayer, over every single house and pop it into their mailbox. Let's see what God is going to do to encourage and bless our community. So as we exercise physically, like we're encouraged to do for one hour, let's exercise spiritually and speak life into the people. So grab the cards, get on the website, let us know if you need them and we'll find a way to get them to you. But remember, in the lockdown, we're not limited because God is with us. Who can be against us? Let's enjoy the word together today. Good morning. Today is my privilege to do the reading and the devotion for day 19 of our Pursue God. And our heading today is God's Solution for Loneliness. The passage that we're reading today is from 2 Timothy chapter 4. The interesting thing is, is that Paul was writing this from prison. And so he's not in a happy place, he's in a locked down place, shut in, maybe like you're feeling right now with the COVID-19 lockdown in our part of Melbourne. But you know, Paul is really expressing his feelings here in 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I'm going to read the last verses here from verse 8. He's really expressing his heart. He's making some personal remarks to Timothy, his spiritual son. So he's saying, Do your best to come to me quickly, for Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. See, Crescens have gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark, for he is helpful to me in my ministry. I send Tychus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander, the metal worker, did me great, a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him because he strongly opposed our message. At my first offence, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. You know, here Paul is in a very, very sad place. He's in prison. Someone that he's really imported his life into, Demas, has gone back into the world and has deserted him. Can you imagine his pain, the pain of the spiritual father with one of his sons has just deserted him, particularly at this time of, of loneliness and need, being shut in prison. And then he's remembering Alexander, the metal worker, who's done a great deal of harm to him, maybe gossiping, opposing his word, challenging him. And also, at my first defence, no one came to my support. Everyone deserted me. Can you feel the emotions here? Paul is feeling a little bit depressed, I'm sure, about all of this. Maybe just like you might be feeling now, deserted, alone, shut in, locked down. And Paul had good reason to feel that with all this stuff happening in his life. But I like what it says in verse 17. And this is an encouraging verse for you if you're feeling lonely today. This is God's solution to loneliness today. Verse 17, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength that through the message, the, uh, the message might be fully proclaimed. 
and all the Gentiles might hear it. I'm going to read that again. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. You know, even though Paul is feeling this loneliness, this lockdown, he is saying, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that I could continue on doing what he had called me to do. Don't let anything stop you. This is God's solution to loneliness. To remember one, that God is with you, that God has not forgotten the plan that he has, a great future for you to proclaim his light to the world. And third, reach out to others and ask them for help. Send a text, send an email. And that's exactly what Paul is doing here. He's writing a letter to his spiritual son, Timothy. He's being very honest about his feelings. He's asking him to come and he's bearing his heart. But most of all, he knows that it's not people that's going to fill that space in his life. It's God standing by him and giving him strength. So may God give you strength today. I'm praying that he's just going to strip off your life any hopelessness or darkness or loneliness today as you focus on him. God bless you today. Well, I just want to testify to the goodness of God and how he knows the desires of our heart and how he goes before us um, and he provides for us in ways that we don't expect. But Greg and I have been looking for a caravan for a couple of months and... We've looked at some very interesting things. Um, some of them you wouldn't want to touch with a 10-foot pole. You know, they look so good on the pictures, but when you go and see them, um, they're not what they seem to be. And anyway, we're just about given up with the idea. And we went to Yarrawonga for a week, which we just got in on the first week of the school holidays. And something came up on Greg's device, and that was in Wodonga, and so we went and had a look and it was just what we were looking for. It was a little bit more expensive than what we wanted to pay. Um, but funny enough, um, I found some fault with the awning and um, there were a few things that needed to be fixed on it. So they dropped the price by about three and a half thousand. And the night before that we decided we were going to get this particular van, I said to the Lord, it, it can't be over this particular price. And that was, you know, quite a bit less than what they were asking. And so they rang us the next day and said, this is how much we're willing to sell it for because we know it needs some fixing up and you've got to leave on Friday so we don't have time to do that. And it was less than the amount that I put before God. And it's so good. It's more than what we could have asked for. And we're so happy with it. And the whole idea of it was to make a bit less work for Greg when he's setting up um, when we go away because the camper van is um, getting a little bit too much for him even though he won't admit it. Um, so God was just so good. We, we'd given up on the whole idea and then all of a sudden um, something came out of the blue and we just know that was God's provision. And so if you've got a desire for something, you pray and ask God to show you. And sometimes you've got to wait. We had to take our time with that. Sometimes I saw something that Greg said, oh, no, I don't feel right about that, and vice versa. And then finally we both were in agreement. And um, God is a good God. He wants to give us good gifts. So we really praise God for his provision in that area.